Chapter 4 Greatness Demonstrated Greatness Demonstrated Now we reach the crucial point. It's no exaggeration to say that understanding these chapters content is essential to grasping the truth of this entire book. So, if necessary, read slowly because we are approaching holy ground. Here's an essential truth. To learn true humility, we need more than a redefinition of greatness. We need even more than Jesus' personal example of humble service. What we need is His death. Listen again to what Jesus said in Mark chapter 10 verse 45. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Savior here is clarifying for his disciples the difference between his example and theirs. He is emphasizing the uniqueness of his own sacrifice. He is telling them not only that true greatness is attained by emulating his example, but also that true greatness is not even possible for us apart from the Savior's unique sacrifice. Jesus alone came to give his life as a ransom for the sins of many, and this separates him from any other sacrificial service that anyone else anywhere could ever offer. Here we find what is completely, utterly, and categorically unique about the Savior and His example. And in true humility, our own service to others is always both an effect of His unique sacrifice and the evidence of it. His sacrifice alone makes it possible for us to achieve and experience true greatness in God's eyes. Donald English expresses the point this way, At the source of all Christian service in the world is the crucified and risen Lord who died to liberate us into such service. That's why all Christian service not only reflects the Savior's example, but should also remind us of His sacrifice. Ultimately, our Christian service exists only to draw attention to this source, to our crucified and risen Lord, who gave Himself as a ransom for us all. Let's move in for a closer look at this incomparable sacrifice.